Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to the adventurous Von Menner, where once again, it's another thrill-packed episode of the books that time forgot. Yes, the books that time forgot, where I go through all my books two boxes at a time. Most of my books are still in boxes at this time, so I'm going through them two boxes at a time. So here we go. Let's start off with the first box that I have here which is a box, a smaller box, of some wild penguins. Are you ready, Roger? Roger's so ready. All right, let's go. Two boxes. And this one's a box of wild penguins. Uh, the first wild penguin is Livy, the early history of Rome. Livy's early history of Rome. I have all the surviving books of Livy in the Penguin Edition. The Penguin Edition is, is really good. And this is a, a really cool book. The Early History of Rome. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Uh, next book uh, I have is uh, the second book of Livy, and this is the older uh, cover design. This is Rome and Italy, which is their second Livy volume. And I have the third Livy volume, which is the one most people have read if they've read Livy. It's this one. This is The War with Hannibal. Uh, the War with Hannibal, the third volume of Lee from Penguin. Really good book. And the fourth volume, which completes uh, Penguin's Livy set, is this one. This is Rome and the Mediterranean from Livy. Highly recommend Livy. He's a fun historian of ancient Rome. Really entertaining, actually, Livy is. Uh, this one is my old beat-up copy of Polybius. This is Polybius, The Rise of the Roman Empire. Greek historian writing about the rise of Rome. Really good book. Read this in 2010 in Mexico. That was a fun time. Uh, Cassius Dio is the next book. Not too much uh, Dio out there in classic editions, but this one is The Roman History, The Reign of Augustus by Cassius Dio. Uh, this next one I had out recently. This is Raphael Sabatini's Captain Blood. One of the classics I'm hoping to read this year. I am hoping anyway. I read this once before years ago. Uh, but this is Captain Blood by Sabatini. Good movie too. Now this is an excellent book. It was one of my, hun my 100 favorite books. Uh, this is The Best of Richard Matheson. A superb collection of Richard Matheson's best short stories. The best of Richard Matheson. It's excellent. Now we have here H.G. Wells in a short history of the world. This is actually a very short history of the world, uh, going up to H.G. Wells' time. Short History of the World by H.G. Wells. And this is uh, one of the Penguin volumes of M.R. James, Count Magnus and Other Ghost Stories, edited by S.T. Joshi. Not sure why they just didn't put all of uh, M.R. James in one volume like Oxford does. The Oxford volume is actually probably the one to get. That way you get everything in one volume. Uh, but this is cool, too, if you have both volumes. I just think, you know, why two when you could have one? I don't know. Uh, I've talked about this before. This is She by H. Ryder Haggard. Uh, my favorite uh, Lost World adventure novel. One of my favorite H. Ryder Haggard novels. And I've liked quite a few of his books. Uh, so She by H. Ryder Haggard. Uh, this is another one of my favorite books. This is Arian's Campaigns of Alexander, The Campaigns of Alexander by Arian. A really good book about Alexander the Great and his invasion of the Persian Empire by the Greek historian Arian. It's a lot of fun, this one. You should read that book. And we have Suetonius. The Twelve Caesars. You can't trust everything this guy has to say, Suetonius. He tells some tall tales. But they're good stories, man. It's a good book. Suetonius. The Twelve Caesars. And this is an interesting book. This is The Song of Roland. This is one of the old, tiny penguin classics. I like the old, tiny uh, cover designs. There was just something so cool about them. Uh, so there's that. Next, I have a volume of Plutarch, uh, The Rise of Rome by Plutarch. Uh, Penguin has split up Plutarch in all kinds of interesting ways. Um, I still think it would be better just to get 
a one or two volume set of the lives of Plutarch and not have them all split up in all kinds of strange ways. But you know, whatever. Penguin split them up. Plutarch, The Rise of Rome. It's actually a good volume. This one I want to get to. Maybe this year. This is Fyodor Dostoevsky, Demons. Look at this guy. He's intense. Of course he is. And he's, a, he's in a Dostoevsky book. Demons. And this one I really have to read again one of these days. This is Gustave Flaubert's Madame Bovary. It's been a long time. And I want to reassess this book. Because I remember not being that impressed, but I also remember being pretty young. So you know how that goes. So I want to check that one out again. Uh, here's my man, Gerald of Wales. Gerald of Wales, who was a missionary who wandered through May Wales in 1188 and uh, wrote a couple really interesting books, and this is one of them. Gerald of, Gerald of Wales, The Journey Through Wales, and The Description of Wales. His books are actually pretty readable and entertaining, and I highly recommend them. Ah! This book I really liked, and I talked about this when I first started my channel, pretty much. This is Gaston Leroux, The Phantom of the Opera. Uh, the Phantom of the Opera. I think the very first video I did at the uh, Von Lodge uh, was, uh, the rustic Von Lodge, uh, was this book. Gaston Leroux's The Phantom of the Opera. really liked this one a lot. It's, it's a really cool book. That does it for this box. This box was pretty small. Uh, so the next box is bigger. So let me get to that one. All right, Roger, are you ready? Look how ready he is. So many boxes. I'll look like Roger by the time I'm done with these videos. Sorry, Roger. No offense. He's sensitive. Roger is. Okay, let's get on to the second box. Uh, starting off all serious-like. We've got The Making of the Atomic Bomb by Richard Rhodes. Uh, this was a Pulitzer Prize winner? Yeah, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. The Making of the Atomic Bomb. Serious stuff right here. You have commentary, Rhonda? Rhonda's hanging out, out over there, just off screen. Next book, The Global 20th. The Antholo an Anthology of the 20th Air Force in World War II, Volume 3. I don't think I have the first or second volumes of this, but here's the third volume. You never know what I'm going to pull out of these boxes. Like this one, for example. This is Dynasty by Tom Holland. This is a fun book about the rise and the fall of the House of Caesar. Of course, this book uses Suetonius as a source, so, you know... Don't believe everything you read in this book, but it's entertaining, I have to say. Tom Holland has written some entertaining uh, ancient histories. And he also did a translation of Herodotus, which I should be reading this year. That's the plan, anyway. You know how that goes. Uh, next book is a really cool biography. This is a biography of Muddy Waters. Can't be satisfied, The Life and Times of Muddy Waters by Robert Gordon. Uh, this is a really good book if you're interested in the great blues musician Muddy Waters or if you're just interested in blues music in general. This is a really good book for that. I enjoyed it tremendously. And this next book is another really good biography of somebody I admire. My favorite actor of all time, Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. This is Bogart by A.M. Sperber and Eric Lax. Eric Lax, Bogart. Excellent biography. I enjoyed this one quite a bit. Of course, my favorite actor of all time because pretty much he's the best. He's the best, Bogart. You should all, all watch Bogart because he's cool. Okay, let's learn some dirty little secrets. The Dirty Little Secrets of World War II by James F. Dunnigan and Albert A. Nothing. Dirty Little Secrets of World War II. Okay, what else we have? Ah, a book by the incomprehensible Grant Morrison. Super Gods by Grant Morrison. I always kind of wondered why this guy's comics were so incomprehensible. And then I read this book and said to myself, you know, this guy's a little weird. Grant Morrison. Super Gods by Grant Morrison. Kind of an oddball, that one. 
next we have Gilgamesh. This is a, ver a new English version of Gilgamesh by Stephen Mitchell. It's a good version of Gilgamesh. It's not a translation. It's just basically, it's a retelling of the story. And it's a good retelling of the story. I liked it. Gilgamesh by Stephen Mitchell. Next, we have the Annals and the Histories of Tacitus. Uh, this is the modern library paperback version of the uh, Annals and the Histories of Tacitus. It has an introduction by Shelby Foote. Don't you go making noise over there. She's going to make noise. She's terrible. She's a terrible, vicious beast. Anyway, the next book I've got to talk about... So now she's running to the other room to bark out of the other window. You know, because this window wasn't good enough to bark about. All right, are you going to be good? I'm doing the books that time forgot. Can you be good and stop barking at every dog that walks by, please? Please? We'll see. I'm pretty sure she's gonna be bad, but we'll see. Okay, where was I? I was on this book, The Middle Ages by Morris Bishop. This is a good book. Next book is also good. <laughs> this is a really, Excellent book. This is Dracula's Guest, a connoisseur's collection of Victorian vampire stories edited by Michael Sims. This is pretty cool. A lot of good old Victorian vampire stories in this one, including a little bit of Varney the Vampire, which I will be reading the whole of in a couple months or so. Speaking of vampires, Look, it's Johnny Alucard, Anno Dracula, Johnny Alucard by Kim Newman from the Anno Dracula series. Johnny Alucard. Next, more Anno Dracula. This is The Bloody Red Baron by Kim Newman. The Bloody Red Baron. Next, we have yet another edition, because you have to have many of these, of Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Brave New World. I got quite a pile over here. Ah, Kafka. The Metamorphosis and Other Stories, a new translation, Franz Kafka. This was a Barnes & Noble edition. Barnes & Noble editions, uh, they looked like this for a while. Will you cut it out? You're being terrible. Can you just stop being terrible, please? I'm talking about Kafka. <laughs> Kafka. Yeah, Barnes & Noble, Kafka. They used to look like this. They were cool. Next. H.P. Lovecraft. Against the world, against life by Mikael Harubak. I don't know how to spell or pronounce this guy's name. But it's a really good, uh, it's a, basically, it's an essay about H.P. Lovecraft, a really, really good one. And this volume has the essay, it has two stories by Lovecraft and an introduction that's pretty good, actually, by Stephen King. So this is an excellent volume. If you're interested in H.P. Lovecraft, this is a good book to have. Don't fall down, big pile of books. Okay, now I've got some paperbacks to go through. Got The Tomb by F. Paul Wilson, Repairman Jack's debut. Uh, auth author's Definitive Edition. I don't know what, what the difference is. This isn't the copy I read. I read a copy years ago. And then I got this because I thought, you know, I want to read those again. I never finished reading this series. Ah, I need this. I'm going to set this aside. This is Shogun by James uh, Clavel. This is a mammoth that I'm going to be reading this year, actually, in a couple of months, James Clavell's Shogun. Now, the colossal television saga that is making entertainment history. Here's a little picture of the saga that is making entertainment history. 
I, I hear the book is better than the uh, miniseries was, and I like the miniseries. Of course, it, I didn't. I haven't seen it since. When did this miniseries come out? The seventies? I don't know. It was a long time ago that I saw it. But uh, yeah, Shogun. Hold this for me, will you, Roger? Thanks, buddy. Uh, next, we have a Western by T.V. Olson, Kino. Excellent Western writer, T.V. Olson. Now we have a wild penguin that escaped the last box. This is Euripides, Medea, and other plays. Another really cool old-timey edition. And a Signet classic. We've got The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain, of course. Another classic. This is a World's Worth classic. A really big one. <laughs> Tom Jones. I've never read this. I've had this paperback forever, and I kind of intended to read it and just never read it, and I'm still not reading it, and it's still sitting here, and... I'll read it one of these days, maybe. Uh, next, The Silence by Tim LeBon. The Silence. This was an entertaining creature feature book that was made into a terrible, terrible Netflix movie. The Netflix movie really sucked, but the book was entertaining. It wasn't a masterpiece, but it was an entertaining monster book. The Silence. Next, uh, I've got some old Conan, a couple of old Conan books. Here's Conan of Samaria. This is from the series that was the Lancer series. Then it was published by Ace, uh, which are Robert E. Howard's Conan, but it also has a bunch of stuff in here by L. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter. Uh, purists, Ari, Robert E. Howard purists, don't like this set so much because we feel it should only be Robert E. Howard writing Conan, but, you know... Doesn't matter. This series did introduce a lot of people to Robert E. Howard. And it has a great cover by uh, Frank Frazetta. This set had great Frazetta covers and Boris Vallejo covers. Speaking of, here's Conan the Freebooter with a Boris Vallejo cover. A pretty good one. Not his best, but it's, it's pretty good. Conan the Freebooter. Uh, ah! The House of the Spirits by Isabel Alonde. I promised my ex-girlfriend in 1994 that I would read this book. I haven't read it yet. I, I wasn't the best boyfriend in the world in the 90s. I was sort of awful, actually. And one of my many failings was that I did not read this book as promised, and I still haven't. I should read this book just because I did promise to read this book. Uh... So yeah, I'll read this book one of these days. The House of the Spirits by Isabella Alonde. It's supposed to be great. I just, you know, I just suck. Michael Moorcox, The Fortress of the Pearl. This is the triumphant return of Elric. At the time, it was a triumphant return. We didn't know that we would ever get any more Elric from Michael Moorcock. But then this book came out, and it was awesome, and it's got really old tape on it. But I remember how exciting this was. And here is a very odd-looking copy of The House of Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne, The House of the Seven Gables. Good book by Hawthorne. Oh, look, it's another Conan. This is Conan the Conqueror. Uh, Conan the Conqueror is just basically Conan the Hour of the Dragon, only L. Sprague de Camp decided he had to change, like, a couple of things here and there because he just had to. Uh, but the real version is being published now by Delray Books, uh, and you can get that in their Conan set, but here it is as Conan the Conqueror. <laughs> Lankar of Callisto, another Lynn Carter masterpiece from the Callisto saga. Lankar of Callisto by Lynn Carter. Here is a really good book. This is Dark Crusade by Carl Edward Wagner, one of his Kane books. All the Kane paperbacks I've got are all split up because when I was packing these books away before construction on the manor, I just was just throwing them in any old box, obviously. I'll reorganize this stuff one of these days. But this is a good book, Dark Crusade. And we have a Fritz Leiber book, uh, Heroes and Horrors. This is an excellent book. A collection of stories of fantasy and horror by Fritz Leiber. He's a good writer. Uh, but now we've got one of these terrible tall paperbacks. You can see that it's tall and stupid. 
Um, this is a stupid tall paperback of a good book, Neil Gaiman's NNC Boys. Uh, great cover. It's just stupidly tall. I hate these. They're an abomination. Uh, but what do you do? Here is an excellent anti-war book, All Quiet on the Western Front. Pretty much everybody should have this uh, by Eric Remark, All Quiet on the Western Front. This was a really good book. There was a really good sequel that he wrote too, but I don't know that I've got. Maybe. Maybe I'll stumble upon it. Uh, a Passage to India by E.M. Forster. Then we've got Thrilling Tales, edited by Michael Chabon. This is McSweeney's mammoth treasury of thrilling tales. So some pretty cool short stories edited by Michael Chabon. Next, we have another copy of Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles. There's young Ray Bradbury there. And you know what? You can never have too many copies of this. Well, I guess you can. But this is an excellent book. I've got a few copies of this book. I, I should whittle these down. But uh, this is a nice hardback edition. Maybe one day I'll give it away in a giveaway. And this is an odd oddity. This is the Rag Magnoli's Meatless Cookbook by Margaret and G. Franco Rag Magnoli. Um, Okay, the next we have Penguin Classics, a complete annotated listing. This was just a free thing they gave away that has a listing of all their Penguin Classics, at least at the time that this was printed, which was a number of years ago. So this is out of date, but still kind of cool. And the final book in today's episode is a good one, a really good one. This is The Ceremonies by T.E.D. Klein. Excellent horror novel, which was based on his short story, The Events at Peroth Farm. I think the short story version of this story was better, but this is an excellent novel. Uh, he wrote two great horror books, uh, Dark Gods and this one. Dark Gods is better, but this is a heck of a book. I mean, it's really good. Um, so if you ever find this book, get it. Get this book when you find a copy because it is well worth your time. Good size book. It's great though. So yeah, The Ceremonies by T.E.D. Klein. That will finish up this exciting episode of the books that time forgot. Be sure to catch me and my man Roger over there next week where we are interrupted once again by a small crazy dog. Okay guys, I will catch you next time.